So you are not unaware that the federal government at the Senate hearing yesterday uh, told Nigeria that three power plants are to be sold for the total of 434 billion naira. A number of questions are around that one already. Well, what has happened to the sales that we have made before? How productive, how helpful has that been? And where do we go from here? How useful, how productive, how profitable for Nigeria in the long term or even in the short term would it be for these power plants to be um, sold at this time? These are some of the issues we'll be looking at as we take a look at Nigeria's power privatization plans over the years. We uh, have uh, two gentlemen joining us for this conversation. Joe Ajero is Deputy President, NLC, and General Secretary, National Union of Electricity Employees, NUEE. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Mr. Ajero. Thank you. And we also have an energy expert and a CEO, CCS Technology Limited, Otho Siago. Both gentlemen are in the Lagos studio with us. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you so much, Ron. Okay, so are you, when you got that information, is it, a, is it like, here we go again, or at last? I think um, I was happy that at last government is trying to take the right step in the right direction. Because for so many years, I personally have advocated that government need to get their hands completely out of power generation, transmission, and distribution. For more than 60 years, that's exactly what government has been doing, you know, trying to run the electricity subsector like a kind of uh, a social work team. But it's very clear that it's no longer working. There is no way government can handle this electricity subsector, uh, knowing fully well that what it takes to keep it running is huge. And on the other hand, for government to run it at the actual rate, the actual cost per kilowatt hour of electricity, it is becoming very, very difficult for government to lay it bare and allow market forces to determine what Nigerians should actually pay for electricity. So but, this is the right step. But, in the you know, if you look at what we have done so far in the privatization sector, especially in the privatization of the power sector, mm -hmm. the electricity sector, have we fared any significantly better? I mean, this whole process started and was kind of culminated around, you know, 2012 and all of that. So between 2012 and now, if you look at and if you take an assessment of all of the privatization efforts, the activities of the private sector, you know, led initiative in the electricity sector, how significant has it been? For many years, government tried doing it on its own. It was very clear. It was a working. So, in 2005, the Electricity Reform Act was enacted. The idea was for government to tactically withdraw from the scene and allow private organizations to take charge of power generation, transmission, and distribution. But government couldn't just do it suddenly. What it did was to you know, initiate it piecemeal gradually. But it's so clear that over the past, since 2005, we have not actually achieved what was set out to achieve. Because currently, you discover that electricity is not still available. And the plan to raise the generating capacity to 10,000 megawatts as of today still looks like a mirage because government is still involved. And we have been saying, get out of the stage, allow private companies to handle this. Let electricity be priced appropriately. The, it may go up momentarily, but with time, when we we'll, when we'll have business owners coming in to generate electricity, distribute, and transmit, with time, because of market forces, the price of electricity will definitely go down. 
But you, as I used to say, you cannot take a goat to the market. You sell the goat, and at the end of the day, you have refused to release the goat, I mean the rope, to the man who has just paid you for the goat. So as a result, government is still having a lot of influence in this subsector. So it's making uh, those who are willing to come into the sector to be a bit nervous. And the discos and the jenkos who are supposed to come in fully to recapitalize and run this business like a very good entity, they are finding it difficult. Because discos, for example, government is still keeping about 40% equity. So it's, it's, it's so difficult because government's involvement is still there. Okay. Well, there's a lot to talk about that one, but let me take uh, Mr. Ajero's opening comments on this. Uh, where do you stand on this? You work actively in the sector. Well, the, if you uh, follow the analysis of the last speaker, you will discover that you know, government is still funding the sector, despite the might around private sector being solvent. Government is still building power station and transferring it to the cronies. Well, what you are seeing the last few days or years is not just privatization. It's just allocation of the power plants to those in government. Now, how can government privatize and then build three more power stations? And then they are still selling the power. Is government now a contractor that builds and uh, transfers to people? And Nigerians are still not seeing this. And somebody is telling me that government is removing hand so that the private sector will bring in their money. In the last five years, government has spent 1.7 trillion for the same people. You sold your house for 400 billion. You gave the buyer 1.7 trillion. For goodness sake, when will Nigeria start thinking seriously about this? Mm. For the past 10 years before privatization, government didn't spend 1 trillion. And you just analyze that uh, government is still controlling 40%. Government controls 40%, but handed over 100%. Government is supposed to control 40%. Or handed 100% over to the private sector. And government has, the private sector have never declared one naira dividend for government's 40%. And we are still blind about this whole issue. You know, we still can't see, you know, that something wrong is happening. So it's a question of, you know, government saying they are privatizing, when in actual fact they have not privatized. Up to now, nobody knows the owners of these companies. Nigerians are keeping quiet. You know how solvent they were. At the point of privatization, they were saying that those are people with financial muscle, technical competence, and they are attracting foreign direct investment. As we talk now, no single company came into Nigeria. So what's the essence of foreign direct investment? Where, where does that one come from? Are you referring to the discos? That, I mean, when you say Both, whether Nigerians are discos or, no, or the jenkos, which Both. of them? And you say that, you say categorically that this is government, in quotes, handing it over to government. Which of them? The seller is the buyer, clearly. Because there's no way, you know, you will sell a company for 400 billion and then you put 1.7 trillion into the same company. And for somebody that bought 400 billion and you that bought 1.7 trillion, you control 40% and the person controls 60%. Come on now. So if, if I get you correctly, you're not against privatization. It's just the process that you're against. Am I correct? Oh, no, no, no. You see, the privatization is what you are seeing. It's fraud. Very fraudulent. It's an exercise that, you know, will not produce electricity. He mentioned it, that power has not been produced. And tariff has been going on. This last one was the fifth tariff increase. Yet power has not improved. And somebody is still advocating for the process to continue that way. You know, it is painful to Nigerians. There is no power generated. Last time they told you that they haven't banned A, banned B, banned C. So what problem has that one solved? Unless you have to rethink this process and think of a way forward, privatization is a total failure. So what's the way forward? Because, I mean, 
ideally privatization is meant to bring in private investors. I mean, pe people draw the analogy of the telecom industry and say, well, this is some sort of privatization. Private you know, practitioners came in and look what they've done with the sector. So in the same case for this uh, you know, power sector also, privatization is in court meant to achieve what it achieved in the telco. So what is the way forward for you if it is not privatization? Well, uh, there was no privatization in the telecom sector. I think they were trying, it's just technological change that you have GSM that happen all over the world, the GM, uh, GSM technology. But even in Nigeria, they had to destroy NITEL first for, MT, uh, for MTN and grow to operate. Because if NITEL is to operate today and they compete, because you can't have privatization without competition. Now, if NITEL is to be around to compete with GLOW, with MTN, you know, then you will see. That's well, the point that... When, when you say they, who are they? The state, the Nigerian state. As of today that I'm talking with you in this station, NITE has not been privatized. But it has been vandalized. Go and tell me who bought NITE. So that is exactly what you are saying. And I've given this example before. You don't need to kill MTA for channels to operate. They have to operate side by side, and then you have competition. That's all about the market. Market is all about choice. Are you saying, in effect, that this whole idea of privatization is actually some gimmick by some people that you imagine it's a, it's, are right there just to you know, frustrate fluke. the state? It's a fluke. Because if you have NEPA that is inefficient, but the tariff is low, and then about 25 companies were earlier licensed to participate in the power sector, and none of them could participate. So if they had come side by side to compete with NEPA, NEPA that was generating 4,000 megawatts, assuming they come out with 2,000 megawatts or 3,000 megawatts, now the generation will go up. But now you took that same 4,000 megawatts you say is inefficient from NEPA, mm. and you split it into 18 and shared it among your friends. Mm. And what we still have is 4,000 megawatts. Right. How does that increase uh, uh, the output? All right, Mr. Joro, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Jago. It, it would seem like, you know, uh, Mr. Jero may have been copying from the Senate, the president of the Senate's notes when he himself said, you know, there is a need for us to take another look at this whole privatization process. And, um, you know, a number of people will probably agree with them when they say, look, we have made this sacrifice, and from what he has also said, uh, the privatization has happened. A good number of the Jenkos have been fully privatized, but a few of them, maybe, you know, not yet. The discos, 40% still belong to the federal government. And the kind of resources that the federal government continues to pour in to the power sector, into the entire value chain, is quite, you know, significant. So, Again, I ask you, given all these facts and the position of Mr. Jero, how productive would you say this privatization exercise has been so far? The, the idea is a very good one. But the problem we are having is government that is holding back. We have a very good... Uh, when you say government is government holding Government is back. holding back because um, you, you cannot privatize and you are still playing in the subsector. Okay, look at the telecommunication subsector. There is none of these companies that you can say is owned by government. Or government is having strong equity in some of these companies. So they run at their own. The three big uh, telecommunication com GSM companies, they are running their business on their own. So government needs to treat the electricity subsector the same way. If you privatize, you must get off the scene. But you know that the electricity sector is seriously different from the tel telecom communication. No, that's where we get it wrong. Uh, let me explain, and then you can explain your part. Um, the, the telcos do not have generation companies, transmitting companies, and distribution companies. You know, maybe they, they are not that cumbersome. They don't have a bulk trading company. They don't have so many other, you know, segments that have to deal with it. It will, pretty, it will seem like it's a pretty straightforward thing. I call, you receive, you know, just like that. There, there, are, there are collaborations <laughs> among themselves, you know, both locally and internationally. But no. it's, it's quite, some would believe it's so much more complex in the electricity sector. No, Ayo, it's, it's basically the same thing. Even the telecoms we talked about, you, you generate 
you transmit. Because you pick up your phone, you superimpose the audio signal into the RF signal. I'm the one that is doing it. It's not just I, some I'm, company I'm trying, to I'm trying to explain to you. Okay. You generate radio frequency signal. You, you uh, allow it to be carried by the audio. I mean, the radio frequency carries the audio. It's the same thing. You have transmission system. It's the same. The problem is that we've been saying it, that government don't have any business going into business. And that is the problem we're having in the electricity subsector. Government has lots of responsibility where financing is needed. So government should stop financing the electricity subsector, sell the discos, the equity they have there. Transmission Company of Nigeria, I don't see any reason why government is keeping it. Then the Jenkos that are there, government has sold some parts, sell the remaining. All what government needs to do is regulatory framework to ensure that each of these companies that are running these businesses are doing the right thing, but not government putting scarce resources into funding these uh, electricity projects. Now, allow gas price to be what it is in the international market. Allow electricity price, float it, so that what it costs to generate one kilowatt of electricity, allow the, the discos to sell at that rate. So that, as I said, at the initial stage, you may have a very high rate, maybe by 100 naira per kilowatt hour. But the power of competition over the years will drag these prices down. If you have, let's say, two, three, four players in the system, there will be recapitalization. People will come in and invest. But when government, you are the seller, you are also the investor, it's not going to work. We've been on this for more than 40 years. Well, that, and it's very clear. It's well, not helping this country. Because clearly, I mean, look at the entire value chain so far of electricity. Uh, the privatization process has been on for a while. And perhaps part of the reason that government is still, you know, relatively involved yeah. is to ensure that one of the uh, elect electoral promises, one of the promises made that, look, if you give me this job, I'm going to get this done, is achieved. Okay? So uh, government wants to ensure that that is done. Are right, and the one way that they, they believe they could be do, able to do that is to remain in the system and ensure that the proper things are done. No, if they remain in the system, we will move forward. Some few but, months. But, 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 how is government an encumbrance in the in the delivery of power? Now, let me just give you a very simple example. Currently, the price of electricity, if you are to generate one kilowatt hour, you are going to spend about. 80 to 90 naira. But how much? How much is one kilowatt hour of electricity currently? Maybe 40 naira. Now, who is bridging the gap? The other day, the discos requested for 702 billion naira from government. That is the difference between what it costs to generate one kilowatt of electricity and what the discos are selling. So government is saying that we don't have resources. So should government be putting in 700 billion naira every six months in this course? When these resources currently available to government is so scarce? You know, Mr. Jerry. So they should, they should answer completely. But he and allow, allow market forces right. to determine what will be the ID price. Of electricity. But he, then once you do that, one minute, one minute. you'll see investment flowing into that subsector. Right, but you remember he said, I mean, with the case of discos and I mean, ever, ever since the privatization, and even though that has been done, you still find the federal government pumping in money into the sector. So the question now is, what is the guarantee that when this happens, I mean, these assets are sold, the government will still be doing what it has been doing over the past years? That's the question. But let me take on Mr. Jerry because I mean, when you raised some of the points, he was chuckling. So I just need to get his response to some of the issues raised. First, he says government does not have any business doing business. Do you agree with that? Well, he is here to tell us the business of government. You know, 
if the uh, if business of government is not for public good, you know, if you look at it, government is supposed to generate revenue. Government is supposed to work, you know, for social uh, uh, well-being of the people and the economic well-being. Uh, but without going into that, you see what is advocating for is for Nigerians to suffer and finance the greed of the so-called private sector, the greed. So if they come to tell you that the market forces is 20 naira per kilowatt hour, government should not talk that it should be 10 naira. Then you sell it for uh, 20 naira per kilowatt hour. Now what he's equally telling you is that even this tariff you are paying now, that the whole country is crying, that is not up to half of what you should pay, even when you are not receiving services in the country. You know, that is what he's saying. That is his anger with government. His anger with government is that government should remove their hands so that they deal with Nigerians. They will pay high. You know, I'm, I'm saying this because you know, it's important for us to situate the argument. He has not said that government is doing anything bad, but he's still building power stations. Because seven years after privatization, none of the companies have built a power plant, not even one. Now, in that sense of this government intervention, building one or two power stations, handing it over to them. What do you think will be the power situation in the country? Yeah. Now he's equally calling up government removing hand. Government sold, you know, 60% uh, to the discos and handed 100% over to them. So why is, why is government a problem now? Because even its investment there, you know, it is not getting any profit from it. So let him situate where government... And in all the whole, the country of the world, the transmission sector of the economy is usually under government control because of its, you know, because of its security implication. Okay, Mr. Jerry, here's what we'll do. Because, I mean, on one hand, earlier on, you said, well, it's government selling to government. So you didn't quite trust the government in that sense. But now you're saying, well, the government play, playing a, a major role in the sector still has a way of reducing its impact on people. So we'll try to balance this, but we'll quickly go on yeah. break. Okay. When we return, we'll get your response to this issue and more. Please stay with us. To discuss in Nigeria's power sector, it, it, it's always a huge conversation, really, because it's something you and I experience on a daily basis. Well, the latest about this is a privatization talk. I still have with us Mr. Joe Ajero, Mr. Otho Osiago. Now, Mr. Ajero, before we went on that break, I was trying to understand your position, really, because earlier on you said you didn't quite trust the government in this whole privatization exercise. You thought you think that it's government selling to government in some sense, but still you say that you want government to be actively involved so they can, in quote, regulate and reduce the pressure that the citizen might face if this is entirely privatized. So how do you want the government to really go about this? Do you trust the government? Well, the issue is not, uh, the trust gap between us and government is wide already. So we're not even talking about that. The, if the whole uh, uh, privatization process was, wasn't equally transparent, you know, that's the point I'm making. But in this same instance, as it stands today, I'm saying that if government had not built another three or four power plants which they are equally transferring to their friends. Now, there will be no power in the country. That's the point I'm making exactly. You know, I'm saying that the entire private sector that took over this uh, power sector, they don't have money that between 2013 to date, they have not built even one power plant. So, uh, Mr. Ajero, you, you just said now that government, you know, is building these refineries and handling handing over power plants and handing over to their friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what you mean by that. Who okay. are the people who are friends of government? And okay. are you saying that the private the privatization process is not transparent? Oh, well, I mentioned in the course of my discussion that the privatization process is not transparent. Let me give you one example. They were they advertised a farm power plant for sale. And my union decided to come up with one, one company to bid. In terms of technical qualification, we were there. And at the end of the day, I don't want to mention names here, but at the end of the day, the BPE took the final bid to the company that was close to us. And at the end of the bid, they announced that that company won. And that company was supposed to, and then the union's company is, you know, the reserve bidder. 
that company was supposed to pay within six months according to law and take over. A year and six months after, the union was still worrying them as a result be that, and you know that's the process, to pay up and take over a farm power plant. They didn't do that until last week. The vice president now wrote that they should give it to that same company, even after the process had been violated. Now, we did this intentionally, you know, to know what was happening there. So the process was not transparent, and, they own, and let them announce the owners of these 18 successor companies in Nigeria. Let us know if the, the process is transparent. I repeat it here that the process has never been transparent. Some listening to you right now saying that would say perhaps you are not happy with what's, what's, what happened and your company mm -hmm. or your own proposition was not accepted and that is why you are embittered. <clears throat> well, my position on privatization from 2000 to date has been clear. It has been clear in the sense that I have analyzed at this forum that privatization will not work in Nigeria, that the, the tariff will go high, that there will be no accessibility, and there will be no affordability, that all these factors, you know, that Nigeria, you know, and the system they are using will not allow the process to work, and that privatization has not worked anywhere in the world. So what will work, Mr. Jero? What will work is efficiency of the public sector, because you are transferring public, public monopoly to private monopoly. If they had opened the market, and then, because they licensed 25 companies to participate in the power sector. If they have deregulated it, so to say, and, they, and the companies compete uh, uh, NEPA out, that would be okay. Okay, let me give you an example. It's not, we are not lacking in private participation. NESCO in JOS started electricity generation, distribution, and transmission in 1929. They are still there today. I'm, I'm trying to draw this as an example so that you know that the private sector can really participate. But by the time you balkanize this mm. and share it around 4,000 megawatts and you expect efficiency, how can you get 4,000 How can you get efficiency? So you're saying rather than, you know, buy it off the government, the private sector should build theirs God and compete you. with the government. Is God that what you're you. saying? God bless you. And I gave you an example before that you don't need to kill NTA for AIT or channels or operate. They have to come into the sector. And participate. But, but the challenge now is, um, Mr. Jerry, you know what has become of the power sector over the past years. And the question is, how long do, would we have to, you know, ensure that the private sector works well? What is the target? Is, you're talking about years if we're going to, you know, make sure that our private sector is efficient. Do you think we can wait for that long? Over the years, we got to 4,000 megawatts. The private sector joined and still remained at 4,000 megawatts. Why can't we do something different. Mm. Well, some would also say that it's a function of the capacity of the infrastructure that government has at this point, point to get it done. So on the one hand, the generation companies have capacity to do, say, 8,000. Let's, let's just imagine that they can do more than 4,000 megawatts. Fine. There is no way to store electricity. No. So, but then the transmission capacity and the distribution capacity are not up to par. Mm. What do you think the Jenkos can do? Well, the Jenkos, their duty you know, is to make sure at least they generate more than that. Remember the agreement they were giving? And when they generate more than that and they cannot transmit and they cannot distribute, no, what happens? At any they point, can't be stored. At any point in time in Nigeria today, and I want you to go back, the transmission capacity, the Jenkos have not surpassed it. The transmission capacity, they have not surpassed it. I, I know that Mr. Ajero would ha have a thing or two to say on Mr. that. Mr. Beg, beg Mr. Mr. Swaggo, but just a moment, uh, something that you said, uh, uh, Mr. Ajero, you said that you want efficiency in the public sector so that the public sector can continue to handle this thing. If the public sector had been efficient enough over the years, why would there have been a need for privatization? Well, they, they have been efficient, but government was not funding it. Remember I told you that for two, three <laughs> years before privatization, government did not put any one cover into the power sector. But as of today, we are hearing of 1.7 trillion into the same sector. So, so how do you expect efficiency without funding? The power sector then, NEPA couldn't have built a power plant, clearly. And you brought the private sector, you say they have capital. And government is still funding them. This but, is conflict. Well, someone is asking you uh, on Twitter, Bodam Gwani says, we should ask you 
if the discos are making enough revenue to cover their current operational costs, because your members are the ones running the discos, you should have the numbers. Do you? If the discos, the discos are making more than enough money today, because even all the, the government 40%, the workers 10%, the government, the discos are still controlling them as of today. They are making enough money, you know, to run the sector. I don't but, but the Jankos complain that they are being owed, <laughs> I mean, millions, Who? billions. The Jankos. The Jankos are charging us gas on dollar. How can we generate gas in maybe the Niger Delta, then use it to generate electricity, you, trans you convert it to gas, and ask Nigerians to pay tariff? Okay, I mean, the cup is kind of full, Mr. Arthur Sagu. A lot of issues. I, I, I don't know where you want to begin, but you know what? You could just get right into it. My friend Joe is just uh, speaking from the point of view of uh, labor. Of course, I am not surprised. But we've been on this conversation for more than 20 years. And it's very clear that we've not made any, uh, any, any inroads in terms of uh, progress so far. You see, we have a clear roadmap. I used to, I always like you giving this example clear roadmap in the telecom sector. The power sector, government is making it even more complex, and it's unnecessary. Everybody can generate electricity. I'm sure most of us will have generators in our home. It's as simple as that. Allow investors to come in. Sell what you have currently, the way they are. 100%. Government should sell everything they have within the power sector 100 percent allow market forces to determine what is the right price of electricity that's number one number two the grid system we are running a, a mono grid system where you generate electricity maybe from the niger delta and you plug it onto the grid then you power up to 1000 kilometers away with all the losses along the line, it's not going to help us. Grid capacity as of today is still less than 6,000 megawatts. We can, we can sell off all these things and initiate a process to do a microgrid system where Lagos on its own can have a grid of its own, a microgrid. Abiyokuta can have a grid on its own. Niger State can have a grid on its own. Then you do what we call power mix. Solar, gas, uh, uh, um, the other type of uh, generation system. You infuse them into the grid. So we cannot have grid turbulence, maybe in Shiroro, and Lagos is on blackout. Lagos is big enough to have its own grid. All these things cannot be possible if government is still funding power. Well, how about we, have, we have grown past that stage. Mm -hmm. If we continue with this idea, the government must continue to put money in power. I can assure you, 30 years from now, don't expect electricity in Nigeria. When, when he said that, how about the private investors build their plants rather than buy it of the government? Do you think that's a fair enough proposition? If they can, if there is no rocket science in building any power station, you can, you can even do 500 kilowatts of electricity in three months. There are trains that are valuable that you can bring into this country within three months. And you set it up in catchment. And you can generate even up to one megawatt. Private sector can do this. And they have done it in different parts of the but world. But you know, it's the same private sector privatization that the Senate president has been, the president of the Senate has been complaining about. The process, the entire, you know, gamut of the whole thing and how it has been unproductive. It's not that it's unproductive. The problem I have been saying is that you, 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 you sell these Jenkos or Discos and you are still playing in the business. So you are not allowing the owners of these businesses to run them the way it should be. Mm. And if government pull back, they are going to have resources to take care of other areas that are crying for government intervention. We should stop treating the electricity as if it's social service. We've gone past that stage. And the bane of Nigeria's development is because we don't have electricity in this country. Mm. 
So we should take the bull by the horn and do it once and for all. And I give you three years. You see the metamorphosis in this country if we do this. But if we keep on pushing government to put scarce resources in this sector, Mm. We will move forward. Well, we, we've seen like Mr. Ajero is not completely in agreement with you, Mr. Ajero. Well, the, the issue is that uh, he is saying government should stay away. If you remember, even before last month, government was paying them subsidy of 1.7 billion daily. And then that's government you are saying take away your hand. Subsidy of 1.7 Point seven billion daily to the so-called private sector. Now, I think that's the role he's saying government should take away their hands. How does this disrupt process? I thought that even government, and that was why I accused government initially, was still giving them money. Okay, so what is your own you know takeaway on this one? What should we do if we're going to have productive? My productive what my takeaway is that if you allow this private sector, there will be no electricity in this country in the next six months. Leave them. That he's saying now, let government not bring anyone cover. There will be the, the system will collapse. Le, let me tell you, all the transformers in the country are on obsolete. They are on overload. Nobody is replacing them. There's no replacement. There's no relief transformer. Mm. The same thing with the the, the, the Jenkos. Okay. One of them has built a new power plant. Okay. All over. Yeah. And well, he's telling you to leave them. We, 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 the, it's an ongoing conversation, definitely. The decision is not here. We've just tabled the issues for those who will take the decisions to be able to look at. But we have to thank you very much for your time this morning. Um, Mr. Joe Ajero is Deputy President of uh, NLC and General Secretary, National Union of Electricity Employees, NUEE, as well as uh, Otho Siago is an energy expert and CEO of CCS Technology Limited. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Thank, Thank you. you for